Warning, the following video is massively out of date. How out of date? January of 2011 out of date. Enjoy. Hey, this is Cold Turkey throwing down with Twisted Fate, the Drunken Gambler. Wait, no, he's the card master, not the Drunken Gambler. I don't know why, but when I play Twisted Fate, I'm reminded of a Drunken Gambler who is like Gambit's cousin from X-Men. You know, it's like they got together and they're out there fighting crime or something like that. I don't know what I'm talking about. Twisted Fate, he's pretty fun. Let's get into his abilities. First of all, his passive, Loaded Dice. You and all your allies receive an additional two gold per kill. By the end of the game, this could add up to several hundred gold. It's a great passive. Helps you to get enough gold to maybe buy that item that you maybe couldn't quite get to or to buy a few extra wards, maybe a red pot or a blue pot in the end game. Great choices all around. Now let's get into his core abilities. First of all, his wild card. That's a really long range, sort of three-pronged, throws three cards out in the air, scales with your AP. So it's really, really great as a harassment tool or to go anti-harass when you're in your solo lane. Hopefully, if you're playing Twisted Fate, you're in a solo lane, whether it's mid or top or whatever. Because if you're in a side lane with another person, that is not going to work out too well. Twisted Fate definitely does need a solo. Moving on to his next ability, pick a card, any card. Actually, it's just called pick a card. So you tap the key once, and then you have a little cycle that goes through blue, red, gold, blue, red, gold. And you got to pick by hitting the key again. And once you've chosen the card, a different ability will happen on your next attack because the card keys to your attack. First of all, the blue card deals a bonus amount of damage, scales off your AP. I think it's 4.4% AP ratio, and it gives Twisted Fate back mana. Red, it goes off your card attack again, but this time it scales off attack damage has a little bit of an AOE to it, and slows their movement speed pretty significantly. And then, of course, there's Gold Card, the famous Gold Card from Twisted Fate. It does about half the damage that your red would do, plus half the damage that your blue would do, so it sort of combines the two. And it has a pretty solid stun. When you level this ability up to five, it's a whole whopping two-second stun, which is really, really solid, I think. Next up, Stack Deck. Stack Deck has passive, where every four attacks, Twisted Fate deals an additional amount of magicka damage on that fourth attack, and when he does so, his attack speed is increased by a percentage and his cooldowns are decreased by a percentage since stack deck is one of those abilities that applies every so many hits in this case every fourth attack it is really important at some point in time to get twisted fate attack speed if you want this ability to get better and better and better as the game goes on and then finally we have his ultimate destiny that's where twisted fate reveals all the enemy champions for six seconds on the map it even reveals stealth champion which is awesome you hit the key again so you hit it once to reveal everybody then you hit the key again and you teleport to a location of your choice this is what makes twisted fate twisted fate you know he's not really that great level one through five he's not that much fun but man once you hit level six twisted fate takes off and is super awesome some happy fun time. It's really awesome how you can go in there, you can gank people when people overextend or are in bad positions. That's when Twisted Fate shows up and makes them pay for their mistakes. He is a really solid character in my opinion because he has so much map control, he can see things that are going on that most champions couldn't see, global teleport. It's fantastic. So what skilling order do I go? You should be seeing a little picture in the video right now. And that's a lot easier than me going through and talking about what skills I choose and when I choose them. Just look at the picture. That's about how it works out for me. I like the skilling order for the build I do because it gives me the bonus harassing damage from wild cards. And at the same time, it gives me attack speed and CDR from stack deck. When I originally started playing Twisted Fate, I wanted to try out DPS Twisted Fate, and I tried that out for several games, won a few, lost a few, but overall I was unimpressed with the performance of that build. So then I was talking to some friends, and they suggested trying out AP Twisted Fate, with Lich Bane being the linchpin of the build. And I tried that out, and once again, I really wasn't that impressed with the build overall. So I stopped and I thought about it, and I thought, hmm, what do I need to do with Twisted Fate to make this work better? So I decided to try out a hybrid build. One of the key items to the hybrid Twisted Fate is Trinity Force. This item has every single thing you need with the exception of lifesteal. It's a fantastic item. It gives you movement speed, attack damage, ability power, mana, health, critical, attack, you know, I mean, you name it, and this item gives it to you. It's an amazing item. Another ability that it has 
is when you cast a spell, your next attack will do a bonus 150% of your base attack damage. Well, level 18, Twisted Fate's base attack damage is 106, which means Trinity Force is going to be dealing a bonus 159 damage to your attack after every ability you use on a 3 second cooldown. At least I think it's still 3 seconds. They've been changing Trinity Force a lot over the last several patches, so I could be off on that a little bit, but I'm pretty sure that's what it does. So Trinity Force is sort of the linchpin of the hybrid build. That's not where I start or stop though. Obviously I start with a Doran's Blade and a Potion, then I build my Boots, then I build my Trinity Force, then I get a Bloodthirster, and then after that, Nasher's Tooth and Banshee's Veil. Why a Nasher's Tooth? Because it's just a great item for Twisted Fate overall. It gives you attack speed, ability power, mana region, and a massive amount of cooldown reduction, which means you'll be alting around the map even more. Banshee's Veil is a great late game for the health, for the mana, for the magic resistance, and on top of that, you get the bubble. Everybody loves the bubble. Who doesn't want a bubble? So this is the build that I had the most success with overall with Twisted Fate Hybrid. I didn't have too much success with DPS. I didn't have too much success with ability power, but when I went Hybrid Twisted Fate, I definitely started seeing results. For runes, because you're doing hybrid, you could go magic penetration or armor penetration red. That's your call. I like health yellows, cooldown reduction blue, and then health quints. Or if you don't have any health quints, you could go with something else. Maybe more armor penetration or magic penetration or movement speed or whatever. Do whatever you need to do. Masteries, I like going 9 down offense, 21 down utility. And then summoner spells, I prefer ignite ghost. Although there are definitely other summoner spells you could choose. I like ignite for the extra offense. And then I like ghost. In case I need to get somewhere quickly and my ult's not up, or I need to GTFO out of a bad situation because I'm about to die. Well, now that we've covered items and everything like that, let's finally get into some footage. Amumu overextends or gets in the wrong position. I don't know what exactly happened there. Ryze is looking like he's going to go to the left. I show oh, no, I ulted to the left, thinking Ryze was going to go to the left, but he went to the right instead. Out freaking rageous. I hate it when that happens. You ult in one direction, thinking that they're going to go that direction, but they, in fact, end up going another direction. Malphite tries to save his team by sacrificing his life. Very noble of the young Malphite, but ultimately, will it be worth it? Hmm, let's find out. Oh, misfortune. She just totally overextended. Get her with the gold card, and then Viger gets the kill. I'm fine with that. I don't mind Viger getting a bunch of AP and carrying us through the game. I'm cool with that. I love it when Vigers. I love it when they get like 800 and something AP and they just walk around one shotting everything they look at. That's hilariously fun to watch. But yeah, Twisted Fate. He's awesome. Super happy fun time. Let's go to the next scene, shall we? Oh yeah, let's. Oh no, Zillion's about to die. Oh, but he had his ultimate on. Can I make them pay? Can I make them suffer? I'm going to pour it in, hit the gold card, get this guy down. Cho'Goth, you're going to die. No, but they get Zillion anyway. <laughs> oh, the humanity of it all. But I'm going to make him pay. Come on, Cho'Goth. You're going down, buddy. There we go. I finally got him. Took me a few seconds here and there. And then, of course, their Lux, or Luxana. Isn't it Luxana? I can't remember what her real name is. Anyway, Lux, she decides to stay in the bush thinking she could take me. That was probably the wrong decision because she, in fact, cannot take me, especially since her ultimate was down. But whatever. Moving right along, looks like there's some funny business going on in the river. Did you see that, Cho'Gath? There he is. Yes, sir. Not on my watch, buddy. Let's see if we can put a stop to this nonsense right now. He gets altered by their zillion. Gonna switch out targets. I think Lux is the perfect choice since she is squishy and she is standing right in the middle of the fight. Fantastic. Their Cho'Gath comes back for more. Feasts our zillion, but our zillion had zillion's alt on him. And then that Cho'Gath has the enemy team's zillion's alt on him. Cho'Gath rises up, but he's not gonna be able to make it out alive. No, sir. The zillion is close, but how close is he? We will not be able to get him, unfortunately, which is sad panda. All right, here's a weird scene. Teemo is hiding somewhere. We don't know where. So I ultimate, remember, my ultimate reveals units in stealth. So I'm not sure why Teemo was sticking around. He thought he was being clever, hiding in the bushes in his little stealth. But with Twisted Fate on the scene, poor little Teemo doesn't quite make it out alive. Tisk tisk tisk. Me and Kenan are being sneaky, 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 hiding in the bushes. Notice we have Baron buff. Yeah, something's going to happen. Uh-oh, here comes Cassidy. He's trying to teleport out. Gold card, Kinnon attacks. I get the kill. Oh, no. That had to leave a mark. Poor Cassidy. Never made it to where he wanted to go. I would imagine he's going to teleport bottom lane, but I could have been wrong. There was a big creep wave there. Anyway, get the Teemo down, and then, of course, Lux. She overextends. Not sure what she was doing there. She drops before she can get her alt off. Now, you'll probably notice from this footage, if I ever brought up the scoreboard or anything like that, that our Kinnon is definitely the star of the show this match. He was doing great the whole game, really just taking everybody out left and right, especially with Zillion supporting him with the ultimate so that he couldn't die, even in situations where he might have overextended a little bit. And you also notice we're going to win this game pretty handily. It's game over. But yeah, Kennen, 
Uh, if I could talk about him real quick, he seems like a really amazing champion. I'm really interested in playing him, because lately I've been throwing down games and I've been playing with really amazing Kinnons, and he continues to impress me. Now, bad Kinnons, of course, don't impress me, but good Kinnons do. I'm thinking he could be a champion that in the near future, Cold Turkey 49 could do a commentary on. He just strikes me as somebody that would be a lot of fun playing. But anyway, their Nexus blows up. We win the game. It's a victory for us. GG. Twisted Fate. Oh, but that's not the end. No, sir, there is more footage to come. Ha <laughs> ha. I was just joking. Looks like old Mordekaiser and Ash are pushing the bottom lane. Vladimir will have trouble dealing with them by himself, so I decide to board on in and help out as much as I can. Got my gold card up, got my ignite up. Mordekaiser is the easier target than Ash, because she's already over there getting away. And Mordekaiser's health bar isn't going to last too long, because you got me there, and not only that... You got Vladimir there, and we all know that Vladimir can pump out some serious damage when he wants to, especially with his ultimate up. So now that we've cleared out bottom lane, let's keep moving along. Oh, Corky's going to kill Teemo. Won't be able to save the Teemo's life, but I'm going to port on in by the Mushroom. Gold card the Corky. His health's going to drop real fast. They got an Aurelia. We got an Aurelia. But with me here, of course, her hit points are going to drop faster than our team's Aurelia. So it's GG. There's another great example of porting in to save the day with Twisted Fate. Here, here we are again. Corky's coming up top, thinking he's hot stuff. Gold card's ready. Me plus Aurelia, focusing him. He won't last very long at all. It's too much damage, too quickly. GG. Twist of Fate is really, really good at punishing people for overextending and making mistakes. That's just what he's good at. Getting towards the end of this game, about to wrap things up, you notice that our Vladimir has DC'd. Well, he'll DC here pretty soon, but he had lost his connection. I'm going to teleport in, see if I can do something about it. Taking advantage of somebody while they're disconnecting. For shame. Although, in reality, I've done it too. I think everybody has. You see somebody DC, you see the opportunity to get a kill. Why not? So, anyway, I'm pushing middle lane. Teemo, pushing bottom lane. We got a few people coming up from base. They'll be here pretty soon. You know, one thing I've noticed, speaking of connection issues, it seems like lately people have been having a lot of connection issues the last couple of days. Now, I'm making this commentary the first week of December. Actually, I think technically it's a Sunday, so I suppose that makes it December 5th, 2010. But anyway, I've been noticing people have been having a lot of connection issues lately. People seem to be DCing, whether it's on the enemy team or my team, and it really sucks. It's no fair when you have DCs in games, whether it's the enemy or your team, because it tends to make the affair much more one-sided. Although our Vladimir was having connection issues in this game, they also had somebody who was having connection issues in the game as well. So it ended up evening out, because every team had somebody with some connection issues. But ultimately, I would like it if the game didn't have those kind of issues, but maybe it's just the people. Maybe their computer sucks, maybe their internet's really bad. I mean, there's all kinds of things that could be going on. But ultimately, I think there could be some problems with the actual game, judging by the sheer volume of people that have been having problems who aren't having problems in the past. But enough about that subject. We're here to talk about Twisted Fate. Am I right? Am I right? Of course I'm right. Twisted Fate, overall, in my opinion, is a very solid carry. The thing about him is, he might not have as much sheer burst damage potential as other ranged carries in the game, but his ultimate more than makes up for that. He can really punish people for overextending or being in places that they shouldn't be. He can really, really make people suffer for the mistakes that they make in the game. He is a punisher of the noob. He is the noob slayer. One of the interesting things also about the footage from the game we're watching right now not only was the Vladimir having connection issues and all that kind of garbage, but pretty much everybody in the game was talking about how completely drunk they were when we were in the champion select. I specifically remember the Vlad talking about how he had just got done with four Irish car bombs a few minutes ago, and as such, he was completely wasted and had no idea what was going on. Glug, glug, glug. So I decided that, you know what, I might as well be in the spirit of things and act like I'm a drunk retard too. So I'm going to teleport in to the laser and die for no reason whatsoever. Hurrah! Yay! There goes my KDA, kill death assist ratio or whatever like that. Anyway, it doesn't really matter. Everybody was drunk and DCing, and everybody was just having a good time. But isn't that what games are supposed to be, having a good time? And speaking of fun, you'll have a lot of it if you're throwing down Twisted Fate. He's a ranged carry who teleports around and hits people with cards. This is Cold Turkey. Thanks for watching. So if you don't mind me saying, I can see you're out of this for a taste of your whiskey. I'll give you some advice. So I handed him my bottle He drank down my last swallow Then he bummed a cigarette Asked me for a light And the night got deathly quiet and His face lost all expression he Said if you're gonna play the game, boy You gotta learn to play it right You got to know when to fold Know when to fold
You never count your life when you're sitting at the table.